In other words, we privatize the gains, we socialize the losses here with the American tax. Moreover, what you find is that the people who are involved doing it are never disciplined. They're never thrown out. This, Same is, this is a little bit like the NBA. There's only six coaches in the NBA. <laughs> well, There's only six bankers. That, that's it. So yeah. they stay. Now, we take a look at this current bailout uh, that we have. It turns out that there are nine large bankers, nine large banks that have been uh, the biggest gambler. Those nine banks have gotten 163 billion of monies from the federal government that is reported. And I'll come back to what I call the two trillion dollars. Of that 163 billion, 33 billion, or 20 percent of that, was used for bonuses of the people who bankrupted their banks. Now, 4,700 people shared that $33 billion. Now, those numbers are so out of range, you need, you need uh, something to compare it against. The whole Conquer program costs $3 billion. Bucks. The uh, unemployment insurance uh, supplement, it was running out of money, for 6.5 million people cost $8 billion. Now, sit and think about that. We gave 4,700 people taxpayer money. That's 11 times more than we put into the Clunker program and that we put into unemployment insurance for six million. And what infuriates me is that two administrations, the Republican and Democratic administration, didn't stop it. And if those banks had gone into Chapter 11, no judge would have permitted those giveaways. Uh, all in all... Okay, well, I, I've got the obvious question here. Yeah. Okay, we had the Glass-Steagall Act that, mm -hmm. that separated mm -hmm. investment banking, which are you know firms like E.F. Hutton and mm -hmm. Merrill Lynch and, and, and Smith Barney and Lehman Brothers from banks like, say, Bank of America and Citicorp. And, Morgan. Okay, Morgan Stanley. So how do we have the Bank of America Merrill Lynch? Explain that. We literally uh, wound up in that particular deal in which uh, Merrill Lynch had uh, bet too much on these derivatives, and they had not covered their bets. I mean, uh, quite literally, what you had with uh, Merrill Lynch... They were making side bets or prop bets, for those of you who handled sports books. Yeah, they had made side bets. They hadn't covered it. Uh, I forget how many billion uh, that they were down. Uh, so the Treasury and the Federal Reserve said, we're going to put these two banks together. But wouldn't that be illegal? Uh, well, Oh, that's right. We repealed the Glass-Steagall Act. That's, that's what right. I'm trying to in, get him to say. In 1999, we passed the Glass-Steagall Act. That, that, during, that was during the Clinton administration with the perfect help of the Republicans. It wasn't like it was, it was purely bipartisan. Well, and in the process of uh, doing this merger, uh, it turns out that Merrill Lynch forgot tell stockholders and the public that they were going to pay $5.3 billion of bonuses uh, to the geniuses who had ruined their bank. And uh, so that came up. The SEC wanted to apply a $33 million fine on the new company, and a federal judge uh, has simply said, this is ridiculous. We have the SEC trying to look as though they're doing their job, they're going to apply $33 million on the tax holder, on the stockholders. Yeah, that was our it's, money. It's that our they're money gonna pay. Uh, in the first place. And he said, first of all, we need a more appropriate fine. And secondly, it should be paid by the people who made the decision, the individual. Right. I want to go one other thing in the $2 trillion. Actually, I, I heard that, and I, I was driving by the Bank of America branch on 4th Street, and I smiled all the way past their ATM. <laughs> uh, Seven hundred billion went out in uh, the bailout at the Treasury Department, but the Federal Reserve put out two trillion. The Federal Reserve uh, overwhelmingly uh, did two thirds of all the money that has gone out in this bailout. The Federal Reserve refuses to say who got the money, what's the collateral, 
What's the terms uh, of these deals? Uh, Bloomberg and Fox News. That's said, Bloomberg, the company, not the mayor. The, uh, His uh, company Bloomberg he founded. News, Bloomberg News, yeah. yeah. And Fox News sued uh, for a release under the Freedom of Information. The federal judge three weeks ago ruled in favor of uh, disclosure. The uh, Federal Reserve has asked, has made an appeal uh, for an expedited appeal uh, to not be forced to undertake. Why do you suppose that is? Well, and at the same time, a, a group called the Clearinghouse, which is 11 of the largest banks in the world, have filed an amicus brief, a friend of the court brief, urging that this, uh, uh, that, that the Fed not be forced uh, to give the question. President Obama last Monday made a speech in Federal Hall in Wall Street urging transparency and urging accountability. Here's what I'm urging. I'm urging that the Senate uh, not hold hearings on uh, Ben Barnicky's renomination five years as chairman of the Federal Reserve until they release that information. Who got the two trillion dollars? Now, I think one of the things we're going to find is a lot of banks are being propped up. I think we're going to find that a lot of the bonuses last year and the bonuses that are anticipated to come this year are going to come out of the taxpayer money. I think we're going to find out that we're back that we're uh, uh, backing up banks out of China out of Germany, out of Switzerland, uh, out of England. Is it possible those banks in turn are doing business with Iran? No, there's no question. I think that we may find that uh, many of uh, the recipients <clears throat> of these banks are paying a quarter of a percent uh, to the taxpayers, this money, and are then taking that money and putting it back into treasuries at three, three and a half, uh, percent. I mean, this is the sure uh, a profit in the world. Congress should not reappoint chairman of the Fed until we know the quality of the decisions that he made.